Welcome back to Mascot Media Video YouTube channel. My name is Giba Tangonye. My job is to make the web development simple and easy for you in this generation of IT so you can start and finish building your web project. If you value this video, enable to give it a thumbs up, like, share, and subscribe. It goes a long way to growing our channel and to make sure that you never miss out of any new updates. Hello YouTube, in today's tutorial, I am here to teach body section elements. If you check my webpage, what you have on your screen, and check what we handled last time right here on the head section element, you will realize that the head have changed. We have a lot of elements in the head section that cannot be seen there right now. Here, if you look at it here from my screen, or from your screen, you can see the difference between what we have now, which is this, and what we had last. And before the last one, we had the HTML5 element. We're able to tell you what HTMLs are and what they are not. The last one we handled before coming here to this point, to this very tutorial, we handled the head section element. That is the elements that are seen in the head section. But right now, we are leaving this head section to go to the body section. I took time in the last tutorial to explain to you what doc type is, what HTML with open tag and closing tag down here, then the body section with the opening tag here and the closing tag here. But right now we are going to the body section. And I told you that all that we have seen in the head section cannot be seen at the browser. The only thing that can be seen at the browser happen to be the title. But today we are going to see the things that can show the elements that can be seen at the browser. That's the body section. So we'll go straight to it. Meanwhile, my name is Gibbert Angonye from Mascot Media Video. We're here to bring to you HTML. And that's why I'm teaching HTML5 element, the body session element. If you found value in our video, please enable to give it a thumbs up. Click the like button, hit the share button, and don't forget to subscribe. These are the things that will make our channel grow. We depend on you for the growth of the channel. Let's go straight to it. Body session element. Then we'll go to our head to for the title. I'm using head two. If I save to be seen at the browser, that's head two. When we're talking of body session element, what we're referring to are the elements that can be seen at the body session of our web page. Having been through with the head session element, we focus on the body section. I have to let you know that there are some of the body session elements that I will not handle. You may not like what I just said now. There are some of the body session elements that I will not handle. And I have reasons for that. And I will tell you the reasons. The reason for not handling them will be, number one, these body session elements, they are very, very important in web development. Not just important. They are large that we cannot just mention them and pass. The ones I want to handle in this tutorial now will be the ones I will explain what they are and what they are not. But the ones I will not handle are those ones that are big. Why are they big and what made them big? Let me list them. One is list. List will not be handled in this tutorial. The next one is link. Link will not be handled in this tutorial. Next is table. It will not be handled in this tutorial. I will tell you why they, not, they will not be handled. Followed will be image. After image, we go to media. Media, oh, we're talking of media, we're talking of audio, video, audio, video. Next will not handle in this tutorial will be button. Put that right. Next will be form. These elements here, you can see, hope you can see them very well, will not be handled in this very tutorial. I've told you the reasons. They are big or large to the point that they are very, very important in web development, that they have functions. They do. They are separate chapters or topics in web development. So we can't just mention them and pass. They are large. There are a lot of attributes within them. So we cannot just mention them and pass. They'll be handled separately like any other topic or chapter in HTML. List is very large. It is there in my channel. Check one of the tutorials in the channel you'll see list check one of the tutorials in the channel you will see link you will see table you will see image you will see me there you will also see button but the greatest of them all will be form form is very very large and i want to tell you that uh, as far as i'm concerned form is very very large form is more than 40 is is over 50 percent of the entire html if i'm to unleash what i have in form you can let that check the time it's going to take and what the things that are involved and how it will help us to build projects by the time we go to php you don't know how important you then know how important form would be or how important it is already so these elements you have seen or you are seeing on the screen here will not be handled here as i've mentioned them i will only continue to mention them to reference to them but i don't think i'm going to display anything concerning them here so i can see that these ones could be seen as uh, elements not to be discussed 
I can give them a title probably with hatred, hatred element not to be discussed here. This element will not be discussed here. Okay, I save is there on the screen. Well, let's see here elements, elements. Let's put that correctly. Elements to be discussed. We we'll have it on the browser. The live server is on so that anything I do, it will save and it will be easier for us to move faster than opening and closing, bringing this, minimizing, maximizing. So that's why I have to uh, share the screen. So you need to manage and I zoom. I need to try to, to zoom the browser. Oh, it's already zoom. Zoom the browser so that it will be easier for you to see. Then I can give you this break. So that we come up a little. All right. So let's focus on the elements that we are supposed to discuss here and see how far we can go with these elements and the first we'll see will be heading one h1 we'll have h1 to h6 h1 to h6 and i don't want to i'm not going to say much about it but let me just display them so you understand when you see then to be easier for me to explain there is a h3 h4 h5 and finally h6 that's how they are in html Heading one, we copy paste so it'll be easier. And two, three, four, five, six. When I save, you see how they will appear in the browser. I want you to look at the browser. Here, let me put HR. I'll tell you what HR means when we get there. That's the line for us. You see the heading one, see the heading two, heading three, heading four, and the five to heading six. You see the difference between them in sizes. See how big the difference? This one is big, this one follows just like that till it gets to the end. So from heading one to heading six. That is what we we'll have. We we'll normally use them for something else where you want to do headings. They can help you from heading one to six, heading six. If you look here, initially I use heading two and it gave me something like this. Then I followed up with heading three. Then it gave me something like this. The other ones happen to be P, which I have not discussed. Then here I use heading three, element discussed and element not discussed. Then here I use heading one to list the heading one and heading six. And I have to list them all here. So that's what we can see in heading. Another important element I would like you to see is what we call comment. I would like to be using heading 2 to comment. Comment. So I will not forget to tell you that you have to use HTML headings for headings only. Don't use headings to make text big or bold. It's not proper in HTML in web development to use headings to make text big or bold. Search engines use your headings to index the structure and content of your web page. That's what you should know. They use heading 1, H1 to H6. They use H1 to H6 to indent the structure and content of your web pages. Users in the web skim pages by its headings. It is important to use headings to show the document structure. Heading 1 headings should be main headings followed by H2. Then lesser important to H3, H4, H5, and H6. So you need to be careful. Don't ever try to use headings to make text big. If you want to use, if you want to make text big, you can use CSS. But for the heading one, two, three, four, five to six, they are very, very important in search engines. So please, let's not forget that. It's not just making text big. If you want text to be big or bigger, then you can go on with your CSS. So that's all I can give to you on the H1 tags, H2 tags, H3 tags, H4 tags. They all have opening and closing tags. They are not empty tags. Let's not forget that place. So the next we'll see is comment. Comment is in this form. That's how we write comment. And the question is, what is comment? Uh, we normally use it to remind ourselves right inside this place at the back end. You can use it to note something. We use it to make notes. Most times you come to a code, you have uh, 10 pages, 100 pages, 200 pages, 1,000 pages and over a 1,000 pages. You need to make comments. So that when you come, you read a comment, you know where you are. And anything that is commented, it's not seen in the browser. I read, for example, and I say this is my comment for today. I save. It cannot be seen in the browser. But you can see this comment in here too. If you don't understand, I put comments. I save. You see it will change. That is comment. But this one down here cannot be seen. But let me copy this and put in a paragraph under it. And I, sorry, please. I put in a paragraph under it, I save. When I paste and save, you can see it here. This is my comment for today. But this one here, forget about the color, could not show because of comment. It start with this tag and end there with this. It started with this, don't forget, and end there with this. Any other thing inside this place will not be displayed at the browser. That is what is important. No matter what you put here, it does not really matter. I have another comment here. 
that is Lauren 300 it gives me 300 words I commend them okay before I commend them I save you can see them in the browser if I maximize this you can see them right there in the browser no problem and let's see what happens as I commend them I save they will disappear they will disappear that's what comment does I have to believe that we are true that all right let's go to the next one all right the next we are all right the next we're going to see will be paragraph we use our p tag for paragraph HTML documents are divided into paragraphs. The P element defines a paragraph. This tag you see here now defines a paragraph. That's what we do. Or that's what we use. No matter how the text is written, as long as they are inside one P tag, between these opening and closing tag, they will be in one paragraph. That is what I mean by one paragraph. They will be in one line. You cannot be sure how HTML will be displayed. Large or small screens and the size windows will create different results. With HTML, you cannot change the output by adding extra spaces or extra lines in your HTML code. The browser will remove extra spaces and extra lines when the page is displayed. Any number of spaces and any number of new lines count as only one space. Let me give you an example. If I have this, okay, okay, let me just put this is my paragraph. I copy this into maybe two or three. I save. See, it's, it's on its own paragraph, another paragraph. Even when the, the words have not covered the entire line, it's on its own. When I handle the first topic in elements, they are seen as block level elements. Wherever they are, you cannot add something by their side. That is exactly what it's showing us. And I did explain that paragraph is a block level. Just like the H1, H2 to H6, they are all block level. You can't see anything by your side. So here, the paragraph is a block level. Apart from that, apart from the fact that it's a block level, it's also are arranging anything given to it line by line for example here now if i take this and put here and put here put them all together three of them in one line let me comment this since we have learned comment three of them in one line you can see them in that if i save okay let me make them four so that they will not be will not be confused on what we did here i only comment one then three is in one line one is on its own line normally it's supposed to see this in two lines but let's see what happens when we get to the browser when we get to the browser we have four paragraphs this is one this is another one and so irrespective of how you pull them together as far as they are inside the paragraph they will be arranged in separate lines that's what they are and if i'm to have something like this in paragraph and i have lauren and i have my 300 if you put one five thousand it will give you five thousand if you put 200 it will give you if you have anything 200 five 30, 50 to give you. I have 300, that's what I need. And I save. It has given me one single paragraph. I hope you can see that. Just one single paragraph. It should be 300 words. One single paragraph. Because they are inside one P. They are inside one paragraph. If you want to create a paragraph, you have to use, you can initiate your break tag here. I have not treated that, but let me just use it. You can initiate a break tag, or probably two break tags, and you save. You go to the browser, you see what happens. Can you see what happened? This is one of the ways you can create a space inside a paragraph. We have created a paragraph. Ordinarily, someone would think that we have two paragraphs in this big test. This is one and this other one. But meanwhile, one near the back end that is just one paragraph. Okay, that's what we can, no matter how large it is, in as much as you put them inside one element, one single element called paragraph, they will all be a one paragraph. We normally use them for text. Normal, you want to write something, on the page those things you see on the browsers most of them are just in a paragraph at the back end if it is for heading they use heading but for test they all be in one paragraph if you want to enlarge them small you can use your css your your style to enlarge it to reduce it in how you want it if for example i have a paragraph here and i have something in line i don't think that's another thing to explain because i've taken care of them if i have something like this this is one sentence. Then here, I break them. I break it this way, break it this way, like a poem. I break them this way. I want it to be how many lines here? One, two, three, four, five, six. I have six lines there. We save and come to the browser. Scroll down. You can see them. They are not six lines. If I expand the browser, you see that they are one, just one line. That's what paragraph can do. Irrespective of how you are doing it here, probably you want to write a poem and present it in the browser. It cannot show. If you want to use the paragraph, Let's say you don't know, you are not aware of other elements, but you want to use paragraph. All you can do is to use the BR tag. The BR tag can help you. If I assume you don't know the right element to use, you can use the BR tag. And let's see what we we'll have at the end there. Open our browser, we must manage the browser. You can see, see the same font is there. And now you've gotten exactly what you had in mind. 
we'll have to assume you don't know of the right element to use. But if you do, oh, let us see. Okay, I'll be using a particular element which I've not introduced and I don't like it. Let me introduce that with a head to, with a head to line break. Line break, the break tag is a BR, the BR tag. It is used for line break. I've used it. I think I don't have much to say about it because it's an empty tag anyway. It's just like that. It doesn't have any closing and opening tags. It's just one tag. It is. That's BR. It's generated by BR tag. It's line break. It breaks the line. I've used it here to break the line. Initially, it was a single sentence, a single paragraph, sorry. But now I, used, I was able to use line break to break all of them into pieces or the way I wanted them to be. And they obeyed me. The browser listened to what I said when I put the, the BR tag. So that is why it is. You have to know it's an empty tag. It does not need a closing tag. It has the ability to push a test one line down. If you make it two, to give you double. If I make this one two now and save. If I go there, you see what will happen. You can see what happened. It gave me two. One was to break the line. Next one again was to break the second line. That's why you have uh, this double space here. That's why we have this double space here. The first one was to break. The other one is to break and, and again. Bro it broke the first one and broke the second one. And that's why we have it. I hope you got it. So after the after the line break, we'll go to the next one, uh, which I think is also important. That is called a pre-formatted test. Before I go to pre-formatted test, there's another one I've used, which I also want to explain. There's another one I've used, which uh, that is the horizontal rule. I'll head to horizontal rule. The horizontal rule is an empty tag. Some people call it HTML, HTML rule. So horizontal rule has a tag which is called, which is HR, HR tag. What it does is to draw a line. You can see what happened here. You can see this line. I've used it before if you, in one of my tutorials, probably in the last tutorial. So horizontal rule draws a line. Maybe sometimes you need a line to tell someone that, look, I'm through with that one. I keep drawing lines everywhere. Uh, what I'll be doing is that any one, any of the elements I use, if I come across, if I need them, I'll start using them. That's what I do. So horizontal rule. Another one that is important again, is a non-breaking space or head to non-breaking space you might need this a lot very very important non-breaking space that is it it's very very important and let me try to use it this is a paragraph with a lorem lorem 200 i save you get to the browser you can see it's in a paragraph um let's say i need a, a paragraph you know how this is a computer paragraph you know how you are taught in school on paragraph that test has to move a little so what i do is i can use this uh, before then let me put some paragraph two somewhere so this will go up and while this one will come down this is a paragraph. So we have two paragraphs there. You can see it. I want to show you something else why I double it. And I don't know if that test is too big. But whichever way, let's go straight. Big or small, no problem. I use this, use this, use this. I have the third. I wanted to look at this thing. I want to shift this test a little. That's what I want to do. So let me save. I want you to look at it. You can see it now. There's a little change here. Nothing is here now. There's a space. A normal paper and pencil. If you're writing a paragraph, to shift a little. All right. So that is what non-breaking space can you you can use. That's what you can use it to do. The other things you can you can use to inform to adjust. You can use it to a lot of things. You use it to adjust something. And uh, let's say I also adjust the test non-breaking space. Let me use it to adjust this and I save. You can see that. Can you see this space? Ordinarily, you cannot give this space. But with this now. Nothing will stay here, there's a space. There are times you will find this thing needful, but for now, you have just learned it, and that is what it is all about. It's called non-breaking space. You can see that you even, probably you want such kind of space inside too. You do it like this. You must manage the browser, and uh, you can see this space here. That's what I use this for. In any case, anytime you need something like this, non-breaking space can help you. I need to know that there's no space. It's just the non-breaking space, they're just together. If you put space, you see what will happen. This is what happened. I put space, and it tells you that you're writing a test. But for now, that's a HTML word, and it has been accepted by the browser. Okay, let's say you want to write a poem. The next we see will be pre-formatted tests. I'll head to pre-formatted tests. The issues we have in writing poem in browsers have been taken off by the pre-formatted tests. If you use a paragraph, if you remember what I did in paragraph up here, uh, I had to use line break, line break, line break to get something. But at the end of the day, when we get to the browser, we couldn't get something else. These tests, the fonts, everything is the same thing with what we have here. There's no change. There's nothing, there's nothing to tell. Look, this is different from the others. But we believe that there's an element that can do that for us. Change the size, change the font style, change everything. That is pre-formatted test. 
So the tag is free. Open and close. We'll open something like this. This is my HTML5 tutorial. Okay. The channel is mascot. We have to learn here today. So this is my poem. There's something I want to show you first before I put other element there. I save and go to the browser. I hope you, you can see something here now. Look at this. There was no tag. There's no line break. But because it's inside this preformatted text, anywhere you break, it will break. Look at it. Apart from breaking it for us automatically, because it is inside preformatted text, it changed the font. Look at the fonts we have here. And also look at the fonts we have here. Someone will know that, look, this thing is different from this thing. It's just the element pre, open and closing tag. And it has to format it for us, giving us a different uh, uh, different style, different font style, and every other thing. Look at how it is. You will know they're not the same. So that's what preformatted text can do for us. If you have a pen, put it here. But make sure you do not put them in the same line. If you put it in the same line, it will also give it to you in that same line. Look at it here. You see what happened? That's what preformatted text can do for us. If I break it, it will join it. That's four lines of poem that we have there now. You can see that. I'm happy. So that's what preformatted text can do for us. Remember, if you're just joining from this point that we are treating elements that could be seen at the body section of the web page. Initially, I said there are elements that cannot be handled. Those ones are so big and large in HTML that they're important and they'll be handled as topics or chapters in this very tutorial. If you check at our channel, you'll see them. That was what I said. And I'm going to do, that was what I said. And I'm going to do it that way. Some of those elements are list, table, form, link, image, audio, video, button. Those ones are large that they'll be handled here in the channel. As I speak to you now, go to the channel in our HTML channel or HTML topics, tutorials. They are there. But there are some other elements that are small. They are infinitesimal. We need to, they, they, they are being used once in a while or they are used inside all these ones I've mentioned. So those ones are the ones we are handling here. Other ones will be handled when we get there. So that's what we can get from preformatted text. Probably you need something like this or anything. The other ones we see. But before I go further, because I don't have time, before I go further, I need to take a look at one important element. Or head to that element is called footer. Very, very important. Footer. You can see it there. Okay. Since I've learned or I've taught a horizontal rule, let's use it here. We'll also use it here. So it should be drawing a line for us. At least free line for us at the browser. That's good. Okay. Footer. Normally in a browser, you see, um, I think it will be right too, I put it where it belongs. I'm not going to teach it last because it's important, but let me put it where it belongs. It's very, very important I put it where, this is where I'm going to teach it. It's footer. It's good I put it in the right place. You normally see that at the browser, at the foot of the browser. That's where it belongs and let me make sure I put it there. So the footer tag defines a footer for a document or a section. The obvious place for the footer element is at the bottom of a web page. Most sites have a, a footer with a copyright, contact, and other info. And now, thanks to HTML5, you can create this with a semantic meaningful footer element instead of using div. In those days, we use div to give you a footer. You can still go. But today, we have HTML5 brought an element called footer. In the footer, there are contents. Like the authorship information will be there. Put your name. Copyright information. Contact information. Site map. Back to tops can be seen. They are related documents. So let's see what we can get from footer. I have my elements of footer. I um, can put paragraph since I've taught you paragraph. We say author. Give it to you. And we save. If we are to save, you can see right there. I can put some line breaks so that I don't know the device you may be using to watch it. Let it rise small so you can see it. Okay, but it's still our footer place. Then I put a, a paragraph. They have an anchor. I'm not taught you this element, but we'll have to try to manage that. So let's say this is a, maybe metal mascot mascot tooth at gmail.com. Inside this place, we have uh, this email. I copy this, so you see the mail. There are different formats. There are a lot of formats for footer. So, mascotoot at gmail.com. Please, this is not my email. Don't need to waste your time trying to send mail to this. So, here, we have copyright. Copy. Let's go to the browser. With this few I've written, I hope you can see something. or are building up something here. And after this copy, go to script. Let me put up some JavaScript. Little to help give us a fine document for our 
debt, give us a fine situation, fine, give us something fine at the browser. Document, all right, new date, get full year. All right, reserve, let's go PDF, PDF. We have our anchor here, our HTTP. Okay, then we have an attribute we call target. So when you click it, you see yourself in a blank page. Let's go to media video. Let's see what we have here. Okay, I take this off. Goodbye. See what we have. Okay, let's see. This paragraph started here, and we put them here. Sorry for that. So if you want, you can take this one to come at the center, and I can remove this break tag. Say goodbye. So if I have style very well, I can style this test align. Uh, please center it for us. So the author is this. This is the email to the author. You can also center the the entire Twitter. You can center the entire thing. So they'll be they'll be centered. This don't forget, please. This browser, I intentionally enlarge the size of the browser. So that is so this is the normal size of the browser. You can see it down there. The author is given to Angonyo. This is the email. This is the copyright. Uh, the year. The sense why I use. Let me please let me enlarge it again. Let me go back so that. Uh, I decided to enlarge this so that to be easier for the users to see. When you go through it with your mobile devices, to be easier for you to see. That's why I enlarge the browser. So you have to bear with me. I have to do it for others. So if you're not comfortable with it, try to adjust a little so that others can get that. So this is the website. This is the email. Then this copyright, you see the copyright there. Let me enlarge this. The Angonyagi bat is there for you. You can see this email. If you click on this email, something will happen. If you click on this email, try and do it and click and you see what will happen. Then this copyright is a copyright. Then this copy here, this unsigned with a copy closed by the semicolon is what gave us this copyright symbol here. They have the year. All right. So the essence of this JavaScript is just so that every year it will be changing year for us. It will be good. You have a something like this. Every year you go there and change. And if you forget it, Maybe three years, four years, five years, and it just be giving you a wrong date. So the essence of this very document, the JavaScript line here, is to change the date for us. This is our test. This is our test. This test is when we go to link, when we get to link, you understand this one very well. This test must come in their video is when you click on it at the browser here. When you click on it here, it will take you to our site. And what is that our site? This is our site. Please, this is not my site. I'm just teaching. I have to take it in that way. So when you click on this test, it's taking you to this very location. That is what is inside this attribute called href. This is an attribute. Attribute is one of the topics we're going to have handle after element. Then this is also this target here. This word target is an attribute. It has a value. This is a property attribute. It has a value attribute which is blank, showing that anytime you click it, it will open in a new or blank page. If I click on this, it opens. Even when I know it's not going to open it go anywhere, but it must open in a blank page. Reason because of that blank attribute. All right, not teaching attribute now. It's there and I explain it very well. So that's all I can give to you on footer. When you go, when you do researches, you see different formats of footer. This could not be what you want, but this is just what footer is all about, and that's how it looks like. You can fine tune your own. Uh, some other better things. I mean, make it. When we go to CSS, then we. I, I just borrowed a uh, little of CSS. This style I put here is not HTML. It's CSS. I just want to make it centerize up. But when we get full into CSS, I'm going. When we get to projects, then we we'll build better and fine footer. So the footer has to be down there while we do other things. There's another one, another element which we call division. Division, but that is not the proper name. Please, the proper name we know it is div. Div is what it's known for. It is a tag, a div tag. This tag, div tag is not it is not like any of the previous element I've explained. But just like it, the name appears, it's just div division. There's no much. You can put paragraph as you see div. You can put a lot of things inside it. You can even put form inside it. You can put form inside it. You can put anything. List. You can. It is there for division. It is just there for division or demarcation. You can put anything. You can put paragraph inside it. You can put anything. What we normally use is that when we put a lot of these things inside it, you can just style them, style all of them with this div, and they will give you something better. Let's say, for example, now I didn't write paragraph, I said this is mascot video. Then I style this, I put the style here, I say background color, background color, uh, red, I'm sorry, background color, red, 
color of this is color 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 to be oh all right this is the background color we want it to be red then color white we we'll look at it and see what we have here then i can put a little of css i can say pardon this css please pardon probably 20 pesos i put my color here let me see that and save pardon 20 pesos means here 20 here 20 here 20 please i'm not teaching css i just want to use tell you what we can use zip to do there are lots we can use zip to do okay the next element to handle is what we call span okay i head to span span has its own tag which is a span that's it. Opening, opening tag and ending. Opening and closing tags. They are there. It has opening and closing tag. And let me give us a paragraph which are Lauren in 13. Okay. That's okay. I don't want a big test. We we'll have something like this. I save. It gets to the browser. You can see this. If I maximize it, you can see it. They're all together. Now, I decided to come inside here. I want to do something. Let's say span. Okay. And span. I got this. I want this ones to be inside the span. I save and nothing happened. Okay. If nothing happened, I said style. Inside it, I want the color. Color of test to be red. Since the default is black. Wow. If you can look at the browser, there are some tests we are affected. And those ones are the ones inside the span. They are the ones inside the span. I can do a lot of things, put other CSS, put it here, and it will affect that particular test that is inside it. When we treated the introduction to elements, we have block level elements that we have in line. Div is a block level. Paragraph is a block level. H1, H2, to H6, they are block level. But span is not a block level. It's an inline. It was inside and nothing happened. If I put a paragraph here now, you see what will happen. If I put the paragraph here now, you see what will happen. Just put the paragraph and save. No text inside it. It has demarcated this. The paragraph has divided this. Even when there is nothing inside it. If I put anything inside it, those things will be there. They'll be inside the paragraph. And I save. I must match the browser. You can see. That's what the paragraph, that's what block level can do for you. The div is also a block level. If I must match this browser, see what happened here. The div took the entirety of this very line. No other thing would be by the side. The paragraph here now have taken all. If I'm to put some style in that paragraph, you'll see what happened. Uh, let me take this style here and put inside the paragraph. Where is it here? Is here. And I save. If I must match the browser, you see it has taken over. So a block level, that is what it can do. But span is not a block level element. So have you seen the span tag element? Let's see some other ones that I use. The all important, the other important elements cannot be handled here. They have their separate topics. All right, our footer is still down there. Let it continue to be there as his position. So let's see the next one, which is quotation. It's a my quotation. Quotation has a, a key tag. Um, before I use that, let me okay, let me take my that's a key tag, a paragraph, a Lauren, maybe 20. That's a quote here. You no know, use an element you've not seen. I save this, maximize the browser. Did you see this? It's in italics. We'll see it later if I've not seen it. I want it to be in quotes. I want it to be in quotes. So here I copy this and put here. Then I put my Q tag and save. Go to the browser. Can you see it? Here it was italicized. No problem. It's in italic. I said, okay, I don't want it to be in that. I want it to be a quote. Then I put that Q. I was able to quote it from. You can see inverted comma open and close. That's what we can get from that key. Or if it's a long quotation, if it's a long quotation, we can change the element. We we'll call it block quote. So I can say short quote or nahetre short quote. And here we'll say long quote. Nahetre again. Short quotation and long quotation. So here we have a block quote, a block quote tag. That's the tag we normally use for block quotes. So HTML block quote element defines a quote section. Browsers usually indent block quote elements. So let's take up a quote. We'll create the quote here and we get it done. Let's say I have this uh, paragraph, Lauren, uh, 40. Give us some 40 words. This is a paragraph. And let's have our block quote uh, tag. Let's have a block quote tag. I have this we save. And let's go to the browser to see what we have. I don't know if you can see anything. It's a long quote. This one happened to be in paragraph, but this one I put it in long quotes. Did you see what happened? That the browser indented it for me or for us. So now 
or you see that this is a, a, block, a long quote. There's no quotation, there's no quotation mark. The inverted commas, we do not see because it's a long quote. If you make it long, uh, put it here, maybe in the, to the next page. Sometimes you have to quote someone to almost one, if they're novel, you can quote to almost one page. So we use a long quote and the browser will indent it, shift it a little. Okay, that's it. We get to the next element, which is uh, abbreviation. All right, two. Abbreviation. We have a tag, abri, ab. It goes in this form. Sometimes you need an abbreviation and you also want an answer. You write some things in the browser with an abbreviation. You write FIFA and someone do not know what is FIFA. And you don't want to write it in full. You write UEFA. You don't want to write it in full. Just write UEFA. But what's the meaning? You don't know. So you can do it in a way that when the user mouse is over it, then the answer will come instead of going to any link to know the full meaning of that so that's what we use abbreviation to do for abbreviation or acronym marking abbreviations can give useful information to the browser translation systems and the search engines when you uh, it's not just for the user can give useful information to the browser uh, the people that use their translation systems and search engines for example now we we'll have something like this i have a paragraph i say the headquarters of uh, United Nations is in New York here. Of the United Nations, UN is in New York, USA. All right, we have this test and I save. What do we have? We have nothing. The headquarters of the United Nations is in U is in New York, USA. How about first stop? Let's use abbreviation to make it the way it's supposed to be. What if the user didn't know what is UN or even US? Okay, UN. Uh, but I've told you the importance of abbreviation. I give. It gives useful information to browsers, translation systems, and search engines. So here, after this, we have the brief element. We have a title. This title is an attribute place. I've not explained attribute, but I have to explain this now. If you already know attribute, no problem. This is the title attribute. This is the title. It's an attribute title. Now, it's a property attribute. Now, it's blinking for us to put something, and that is the value attribute. What I'm going to put here is whatsoever is the full meaning of the United Nations, of the UN, sorry, which is the United Nations. You save. You see that here, but there's another thing. This United Nations, this UN has to go and go inside this open and closing tab. You save it. We can go to the browser. If you look at the browser, the UN has been underlined. Apart from underlining, you can mouse over it to see what happened. If I zoom this, so it's easier for you to see. By mousing over it, it's telling you what is it, the meaning of UN. Now, apart from telling the meaning, the other function, the browser can use it, the, uh, uh, the translation systems and search engines can use it. If you want to tell them the, that of the US, no problem, you can do that. So by mousing over it, you can sort yourself instead of trying to get a link that will tell you what the full meaning of a uh, UN. The other abbreviations are acronym that can be handled in that way. If you don't want the readers to start clicking here and there, you can do that. So if they have system, the mouse over it and get solution to that. The next element we see will be address. Our head to we have our tag or address tag is there for you. We know what is address. I don't need to explain what an address is. Uh, let's say I'm um, to write this address. Okay, let me write it inside the tag. There's no need. Say uh, probably published by the publishing a division of random house Inc. 1540 Broadway. 1540 Broadway here in New York. New York. All right, I save this. You look at this. No style, nothing, but. Because who put inside an address element? Something is happening there. We saw the styling, the italics, and the change of fonts. It didn't give us the same font with this one. This is the default. It did not give us. Give us something else. That is what the element address can do for us. If you write again, you will see. Anyone you write, you will see. Okay, let's see another element. Um, I'll head to site. Site. Site is site. That's the site tag. Open and close. It's not an entry element. It has an open and close tag. So let's cite it. Okay, let me have a paragraph. I say, let's say this. I don't know if you know about John Grisham, the client by John Grisham, printed in 1993. I save. Go to the browser. Nothing happened. Actually, John with the big O. That's good. All right. Nothing happened. That's the browser for you. Nothing happened. Let's see what we'll do. We we'll try to cite uh, something. The client. Let me take this. Site, put this inside. I save just italize the client. That's the name of the book. I don't know if you have seen the book or you've read the book. 
John Grisham, the client. A very nice book. It's a very nice book. So you can see what happened there. There are many, 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 many of them which I wouldn't want to, but I'm taking off the ones that are important. I will not leave those important ones because the next time you hear about them, you're just using them. Since it's elements, I want to make sure I give you a lot of in elements. All right, let's go to the next one. Now, uh, here too is bi directional override. Bi directional override. It has its own tag, which is BDO. A very simple the element is used to override the current test direction. If the test is moving from right to left, put it in a BDO, it will change it from right to left. If you're moving from left to right, you will see it moving from what? Right to left. Simple. Let's see that. This is a paragraph. This, this is a test in normal position. Then I take this off, copy it. We will have our, our video, that's the tag. I have here, sorry. Right to left. You can see what happened here. When I say right to left, that's what happened. Okay. You see what happened? This is the normal. This is an attribute direction. Left to right is the default, but the turning is right to left. So when we put it left to right, it still gave us the same thing we just gave us the same thing we gave it to. The browser was able to have put the same thing. But when we say right to left, something changed. Hope you get that. Okay, that's it. The right to left and left to right. Next we see is a computer code. Computer codes like a keyboard. Keyboard is an element with our KBD as element KBD. It defines keyboard input. So let's see I have a, something like this. Let's say I have something like this. I'll put in a keyboard, also put in a, a paragraph. And probably let me put in a paragraph first. I'll then copy it to the keyboard. Radius. This is something I, I got it from maybe PHP or whatever. It's equal to theta is equal to because I know I missed something. You have our these are variables. Forget about it. It's just I want to show you something. 360 is equal to 360. Okay, let's have this like this. They are in paragraph. I save. We can see what they look like here. Then I copy and put them in keyboard. Let's see the difference between two of them. Uh, probably let's do some break tag. Put some break tag so you can save. As much as the browser and see. If you look at them, you see a difference between two of them. So this is what keyboard can do for you. And this is what paragraph can give to you. I don't know. If you need it, very simple. You can do that. All right. You can see the difference between two of them. And I think you preferably, I take that off keyboard. What if I have uh, our keyboard again? And I have this file open. Then we we'll save some break tags. This is how it look like if it's in a keyboard element. What if I put in a paragraph? Only to check the difference. Can you see if you have seen this kind of thing in a browser, maybe something that is coming out from a computer or whatever? Something that is coming out from a computer or whatever, you can see the difference. So the first use a paragraph, while the second is using a keyboard. You can see the difference. Let me use a, let me get some text and the paste here. You see the next element is why I get the text. The next element will be sample. It has an element sample. That is the element. If it's not an empty tag, please, you see them double there. So I have to paste this here, sample. And while the first one is paragraph, we look at two of them and see the difference. And uh, you see the difference. If you look at two of them, you see the difference. I know the one that is, that is usual to you is this second one. You must have seen it somewhere. That is this one, not this first one. So preferably we use this for samples. What if we have a code? I need to get it to. I need to. Codes. Luckily, still codes. Please let me put this thing down again. As usual, I have my paragraph. I have my code. Um, let me paste this here and also paste this here. Let me use this pre preformatted test, then code. Then there's this inside it. You can look at what I have here, what I drop here. You can take your time. I hope you can see them since I didn't read them out. The radius is this theta pi pi 360 double. That's the variable here. Probably one of those code in PHC program. Then here, if I save, I have it in paragraph. Then here, I have it in uh, uh, code is nested inside preformatted test and uh, we'll have the test. Let's see what we we'll see at the browser. This is where you have it in paragraph. And this is where you have it in code and preformatted test. I think this one is better. It's used for something. Don't use paragraph to do that where you have these other ones. 
Having gone this far, thank you for following me. This is our channel, Mascot Media Video. My name, I am Gibat Tangonye, presenting this very thing to you. It's my pleasure to have you here, and I'm happy you have gone with us up to this level. If you value this tutorial very much, please enable to click that uh, like button, share to friends, and don't forget to subscribe. These are the things that will make our channel grow. Like I always say, this channel is new, but I tell you that what we are teaching here is not new. But we are trying to put it in a better place, the better position, so that you can easily understand what we are doing here. We are teachers, and we are teaching. We are presenting the best to you, using the best approach, an approach that will make it easier for you to follow in what we are doing. That's what we can solve for now.